So. <sighs> we, hey, Victor. Oh, hello, brother. <laughs> <laughs> so, weed. Weed, you said. Yeah, so it's like 9.30 at night. So, me and the roommate decided, or I should just say Irvin, me and Irvin decided we're going to go to a dispensary and get us some weed. Here's the thing. I don't like smoking. For whatever reason, I guess because of the coughing aspect, I just don't like it. So, we ended up just going, we were looking for cookies, but we ended up getting some candy bars. Chocolate bars. Yeah, some chocolate bars. And I like edibles, but last time I tried these bars, eh, they really didn't do nothing for me. The crazy part is how accessible it is to go and get uh, something to get me high. Just Mm -hmm. like going down to the convenience store. Right. As long as you're 21 and have a valid ID. Yeah, but for the most part, everyone that's usually going... And this is in a legal, uh, yes. a legalized state. Yes, we're in Pueblo, Colorado, so it's all good here. It's recreational and medical, but I don't have a medical card, so that's the that's next step. Right, So, but yes, yeah, you can definitely uh, go ahead and get into a dispensary as long as you're 21 and up, and... Uh, enjoy recreational marijuana. Yeah. And you had it in the form of a candy bar. Yeah. An edible. Yeah. And could you taste the weed in it? No, you really don't taste the weed. That's so a crazy thing. So what did it taste thing. like? Well, this uh, candy bar was called a monkey bar. Monkey bar. Yes. And so it tasted like bananas and some kind of like nut, like some kind of almond, almond or something like yeah. that. So it really mm-hmm. tasted like milk chocolate. Almonds mm. and bananas, which mm. is not a good com- uh, combination. combination. Yeah, <laughs> it, it just doesn't go down well. Like halfway through it, I was like, I don't yeah, even know if I want to finish this. Oh, and yeah. also, on a side note, each little square's uh, ten milligrams. There's um, ten, 10 squares. Yeah. yeah, so it's hundred milligrams, 100 and milligrams. so I took that about an hour ago. So uh-huh. we'll see if it kicks in during this. Are you feeling any effects right now? Mm. Mm. Not really. No. Nothing. Yeah, they take a while. Yeah, like Those two animals. hours. Yeah, yeah, they do. <clears throat> yeah, I always uh, seem to think, no, nah, this isn't working. And um, I uh, I have to end up uh, either um, dabbing or smoking a joint or something like that. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, I've, I've been able to feel them. But, yeah, they do definitely take a, about up to two hours, yeah, maybe the, even more. The hard part with an edible is that... They make you want to go to sleep at first. Mm-hmm. But if you can power through that sleep, like if you're out and about or you're just walking around doing something like you're not in your comfort state, mm-hmm. uh, then you get this high that lasts for like six, eight mm-hmm. hours, I think. Yeah. I've yeah. taken a gummy yak at six o'clock yeah. in the afternoon. And me being an unresponsible, t- uh, Younger I don't want to say teenager, <laughs> how old am I? <laughs> 22, yeah. So, don't know how old you are. Yeah, hey, uh, uh, irresponsible young, young adult. Young adult, yeah. Uh, can we just call myself an older child? I don't like the term <clears throat> adult. I feel attacked. <laughs> Anyways, so, and then uh, it wouldn't, the effects would last till about 2 in the, ev- in the, in the morning. morning. Yeah, like 2, wow. 2.30 in the morning. Man. So it's like a six hour, well, yeah, other than those so. first yeah. additional, uh, yeah. two additional hours. So what is that? Six, six. Yeah. yeah, about six hours, a six-hour high. And it's consistent. It doesn't fade in and out. Yeah. It doesn't, you know, go away, mm-hmm. come back. And wow. So it's just a consistent high. I, I can't say that I've actually really experienced an edible like that because I usually try to get a high dosage because I'm looking to go to sleep. And, um, uh, <coughs> you know, I've been able to, like, uh, make that happen pretty quick by ingesting cannabis. And uh, so, yeah, I usually go to sleep, but I can say that in the morning I do feel kind of groggy. Like, yeah, are you still oh, yeah. kind of high? Or? Yeah, like uh, <laughs> if I take, for example, 100 milligrams, I sleep for about 11, 12 hours, which are phenomenal. It's just yeah. a phenomenal sleep. Yes. Like, I do recommend it, like, just to go yes. to sleep. Yeah, that's why um, I do it. And, um, but, again, I would go ahead and take this, and then the next morning, if I took too much, like, let's say I took about... 60 milligrams to 100 milligrams mm-hmm. uh i feel groggy the next morning yes yeah, so but if i take like you know anything under 50 mm-hmm. or anything 40 and under really yeah you're kind I'm, of okay yeah i'm yeah. okay the next day i'm you know a little tired but 
uh, not in terms of like, oh, I have to get about it, but it's just yeah. like, man, I really was enjoying laying yeah. down. But I think that's yeah. the thing every morning. Right, right. So that's the experience of uh, what you're able to go ahead and enjoy in this uh, legalized state and how accessible that is. To an extent. Mm. So they don't have everything. For example, yeah. this dispensary we specifically went to, um, we were going in with the intent to buy some cookies mm-hmm. or some brownies or something like that. Right. You know, something right. kind of like baked goods, essentially. Yeah. Something that would taste good when you, you put it in a microwave and heat yeah. it up for a bit. Um, this dispensary only had drinks, these candy bars, and gummies. Yeah. That yeah. was it. So, yeah, it's just whatever they're... Uh, whoever they're working with, any companies they're working with or whatever. Some of them are in-house, but yeah, a lot of the edibles actually, they're, they're manufactured through a lot of different companies. So yeah, just kind of depends on, on, uh, what you're carrying. And some of them are trash. <clears throat> and some of them are pricey. Well, yeah, some of them are pricey, but they kind of give you, it's different kinds of highs, you know, like I've tried mm-hmm. gummies from one vendor mm-hmm. and been like, whoa, this gives me one high and mm-hmm. then tried gummies from another vendor and it's like, dang, this is a different high and then oh, go back to that original gotcha. uh, one and, uh, you know, if a lot of time has passed, let's say over the course of like a month or two, mm-hmm. it's another completely different high. Mm-hmm. And so, so it's like, maybe just like not enough consistency in, well, the, in the I wouldn't say product. consistency. I mean, it, it would still be baseline, but a couple of things would be enhanced. Right, right. But that, I mean, like, there's not consistency in the uh, type of uh, high because it always varies. Every time you smoke a different marijuana uh, a different strain, weed. a different strain of marijuana. We'll call it a different a marijuana weed. strain. Whenever you smoke the weed. Yeah, so uh, every time, you know, each strain is supposed to have its own characteristics of cannabinoids and... Uh, you know, profiles of, of that. Yeah, but they're never the same. And exactly, and that's the thing every time, you know... Even if it's the same strain. <clears throat> no, I don't think every, it's ever even, the same. Um, they say they're close, but it just really depends on the growth. There's a bunch of factors that go into all it's like that. It's like food. But, um, this little dog wants to go outside. My yeah, so... Um, I mean... I, I would have to debate that, yeah, that's just part of it, you know, as long if, as I've been smoking air, you know, as long as I have, it's basically like, you know, you smoke one and sometimes it does this and you smoke another one and it's just a little bit different, but I mean, this, the characteristics I think are, are pretty similar. I can't really distinguish them that greatly apart. Uh, yeah, I mean, but they're <clears throat> they're trying to scientifically now. So. And that's the thing I was getting at. And they are trying to do it scientifically. And I don't think I agree with that. I kind of agree with it and I kind of don't. Yeah. I agree with I mean, it in the sense that... and bad, but sh- I, I just really think that... Uh, you know, trying to isolate each uh, cannabinoid and, and create your own profile, you know, that's what they're going for. They're trying to make designer strains. They're patenting strains. They're, um, again, they're, they're you know, breaking it down to each cannabinoid and then making your own profile that supposedly is going to work the best. Yeah, it's weird because I, I think of weed in terms of food. Like, it's a consumable good. Yeah. Like, uh, for example, you don't have anyone who patented a, a burger, right, essentially. Right, Or a right. taco. Yeah. It's weird. Exactly. Or a certain type of taco. You can even get specific. Yeah. Like, no one person has one patent on that. It's yeah. weird. Well, so. it is, but um, I, I don't fully understand the whole idea of uh, patenting the strain. It's kind of um, brand new, but it's it's definitely about business. And it's about being able to um, kind of control the market a little, kind of regulate. Um, and that's the thing. There's a lot of regulation. And you get into, again, with these scientists that want to, you know, make their own cannabinoid profile, you know, because they believe that that that's the best, you know. Yeah. <clears throat> when, you know, there's a lot of people that still <clears throat> also I think everyone think, just varies. Well, there's a, uh, some people that think, um, you know, I believe, you know, <clears throat> you just kind of have to keep it a lot more natural. If you want to have 
Uh, if you want to go beyond the high, you know, if you, you, they're probably just thinking it in terms of, oh, people just want to get high. And so you just regulate it and do this and that, whatever. But these scientists, they're actually believing that <clears throat> they can control these profiles to make them uh, medicinally um, capable and to have these consistencies. And um, and I just, I don't know. I just, I don't really trust the doctor. <laughs> My thing is that... Um... And, and, and there's a lot that happens naturally that's been working, so... Yeah, my I mean, thing is they just find like uh, certain strains and just promote that strain and just kind of don't talk about the other ones. Like for example, there's like twenty something cannabidiodes in weed, and we only know of like what four or five of them. Well, that's because those are the most dominant. But yeah, there's still a lot. Like of there's a still a lot of that needs to be done. The biggest or one that, combining them. Yeah, well, the biggest one that has started to come out that they started to. Well, of course, everybody knows about the CBD. And that's the one that's taken off, and everybody. That's a whole another topic of just getting into that. But that's basically one cannabinoid that has no psychoactive effects, and people say that it has so much of uh, properties of uh, yes, cure all kind of uh, properties. But as far as um, THC, the actual THC compound, and or mixed with <clears throat> a full spectrum. Um, uh, you know, either the weed or an extract, a full sp spectrum extract that would include all the cannabinoids, terpenes, all everything. Um, those, um, uh, man, I don't even know what the they hell just is. mix different. Like it's just like cooking, essentially. Like they have a bunch of these ingredients that we know do certain things, but they just so happen to all mix together in this one plant. Right. Like right. isn't that kind of weird? And the other one we know is like. CBV. Oh yes, I was getting THV. at the, the other the other cannabinoid. That's THC. Yes, the the one that is coming out right now is CBN. Oh, CBN. <clears throat> yes, THC has a lot of uh, healing properties. That that yes, it does do a lot of stuff. And that's you mean CBD? Kind of. I've seen that, but CBN is this new cannabinoid. That is coming out, and they're making claims that it has its own benefits as well. What does that one do? Yeah, you know, oh man, I can't even remember. You'd have to look that yeah, up real quick. No, we'll look it up later. The other one. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we're trying All to right. keep this as All right, fine. as time constrained but yeah, as possible. Anyways, yeah, I mean, that, that, even getting into that, yeah, it's you know that's another cannabinoid. But they got so much research that they're getting into, you know, and so yeah, I can I. I get it, but at the same time, these guys are digging in really deep, and uh, I don't think it's really, you know, ne necessary, you know. I mean, I get it, because that's what we're talking about. It comes kind of back down to, you know, you get these edibles, and sometimes their effects are one way, and sometimes they're another way. I don't know if you can really get over that without, you know, scientifically um, dissecting this all and trying to control it, you know. Mm. Yeah, so it's 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 pretty crazy, but My, yeah, yeah, because you know, someone has you know, to buy that, someone has to fund that, so someone's getting something out right, of something, right? And that's the thing, living out here, I'm learning a lot about what these guys are doing because yeah, this stuff is kind of crazy. It's big business, you know, it's big business, and it's like, what, where's all this money? You know, what is, what is what is going on? And this is the stuff that they're doing, you know, this like is, um, my thing is uh, the cigarette companies. When people mm -hmm. start switching from cigarettes to, I mean, I'm not going to say it's going to eliminate cigarettes, but it's going to definitely make cigarette sales go down. Um, quite possibly. I mean, they're trying to eliminate cigarettes uh, completely. But yes. uh, one thing that maybe, um, you know, in the future could be hemp. Uh, hemp has a lot of these uh, fibers that are <clears throat> a lot more like a tobacco, like a, um, like a cigarette. Um, and, uh, they do have these hemp cigarettes that you can kind of smoke in there. So they're, the outside of it is hemp or the inside of it's hemp? The inside. The inside's hemp? Yes. It's, it's actual wow. hemp inside. Yes. And, uh. So there's a bunch of this, <clears throat> bunch of stuff. There's a bunch of stuff. I mean, again, that's, uh, that would be, that's not even THC. That's no THC. It's just hemp that supposedly 
does contain CBD, and, and if you, again, amounts could vary and because stuff. Have crazy we not right done uh, any research on hemp because we always thought it was the same as weed or? Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Part, so that's well, why people I mean, are just finding this stuff out. Oh because yeah, I believe I mean, hemp was it's fairly well, legal hemp, beforehand in every state. Uh, no, not really. I think they just passed something like here. Oh man, what year was it? Maybe even as early as like twenty eighteen. I think it was 2018, if I'm not mistaken, because right now, um, apparently, it's just, it is going crazy, especially here in Colorado, and um, yeah, they're just learning how to, um, how to get this uh, hemp plant to have higher doses of CBD that, you know, everybody's making these claims on that, you know, this yeah, CBD is so Yeah, so this is, is so stuff powerful. not getting talked about. Like, No, I, this no, is... it's not. This is this is a whole other topic. Again, you know, um, you come out here and you, you think it's just going to be about this, that, or whatever. But, I mean, I thought it was going to be a bunch of people kind of smoking weed. Not That's kind of what I thought but, was. But more people, just a lot of social stuff or whatnot. But... I think um, a lot of that is tourists, you know, driven. It's it's not even really the public. I think the public just smokes regularly, contained in their home like they're supposed to. Um, <clears throat> but um, yeah, I can what do you see call that. It? The industry, the industry is like, whoa, like what's going on? They're doing so much stuff, and and what's happening here is. A lot of kind of on the forefront, so <clears throat> you know these claims that CBD are doing this or doing that, and they're getting it from this hemp plant. They're not necessarily all true because I've seen these hemp plants, I've seen hemp farms, and I've heard claims of what um, potencies of CBD that they're supposed to be getting in these plants, and they're not. They're not. They're getting lower dosages of CBD and. And still trying to put something together. I don't know how well it's working. There's a CBD all over the place, but it could be um, snake oil. It, I mean, it very well could be. You know, there is a bunch of stuff coming out about mislabeling and whatnot. But again, this is a bunch of CBD stuff. That's like I don't want to put a lot of negative <laughs> on the CBD, but you do got to be careful because there's a bunch of products out there. Yeah, it's just because the stuff's not legally researched right and again like i said the farm that i went to and i saw they were um uh, focusing on how to get these plants to have higher dosage uh dosages of cbd and they do have plants but they're just not um uh in in heavy supply you know they like for instance uh charlotte's web that that company right there they have their own cbd um strain which is charlotte's web that they created and it does have high doses of uh, CBD, and it, they have proof that it does do well in these um, situations when you need them for health stuff, as such as like epilepsy and um, uh, you know other seizures, yeah, and seizures, stuff like that. and um, I guess even like calming and um, stress relief and whatnot. But um, yeah, they have their uh, their their own, but you know they're not supplying everybody. You know, they're they're supplying it's a small group hard. of people. It's kind of hard there. to even find that product. You know, here, and they're they're here in Colorado. <clears throat> so yeah, you uh, you definitely um, have to, you know, kind of uh, research what you're getting into and whatnot. But yeah, there's um, there's there's other companies that are coming up, but you know, again, they're just not in abundance, but yeah, the truth is, is that the CBD dosages that you should be consuming should be high. They should be a lot higher than what, you know, you could kind of get, for instance, the 100 milligrams that you just took of THC that you're talking about are going to really, really going to be affecting you. They hit me like 20 minutes ago, <laughs> so I'm just letting you know. I was, okay. I was yeah. looking at you, and I was like, yes, dude, chill out. <laughs> That's why I haven't yeah. been talking. Yeah, but, uh, yeah, so basically, you know, you could take 100 milligrams of CBD and really just not even feel nothing, really. I mean, it could maybe be a shift of, uh, of uh, calming. Um, no, I felt something when I took some CBD pills. The 50 milligrams? Yeah, the 50 milligram the 50 tablets milligram. that we got. Yeah, that's what I'm saying, you something. know. But it was more feel... of a, like, I mean, I'm just tired. I just want to go to bed and take mm -hmm. a nap. Okay. It wasn't like, oh, I'm so exhausted or, yeah. or yeah. like... I just instantaneously just crash. Like yeah. It was something like, oh, let me get comfortable, this and that, you yeah. know, yeah. figure out where I'm at. Huh. And then 
Yeah, interesting. Go take yeah. a nap. Yeah, so, you know, the, I mean, the, it is going to give you a shift right at about that, but it's not going to be as intense as uh, THC by far. Yeah, that's... um. <clears throat> but, yeah, the, you would need... um. You, you, you could take up to, you know, 300 um, milligrams for, like, h- higher cases of... Uh, more intense cases of um, anxiety and so, stuff like that. So, did you, you know, know any of this prior to going to... Prior to coming to Colorado? No. Um, so, yeah, like, none of this stuff is getting talked about, essentially. No. Like I said, yeah. <laughs> I, I learned a lot of this stuff actually being on hand. I mean, um, you know, I worked on this farm, and, and it's um, it can be it can be a little tedious because you're basically, what we were doing is... Um, so, my thing is, um, to all the naysayers out there, mm-hmm. those states who are not legalized, like, for, te- for example, Texas. Texas is going to be one of the last states to legalize... Mm-hmm. weed if they legalize weed and um so to all those naysayers that don't see this other side of the argument that there are other stuff mm-hmm. that I, i'm assuming they have the perception that it's just strictly um legalizing weed legalizing the people to go ahead and get high and not all these other aspects mm-hmm. um do you the think that's kind of keeping everyone behind in terms of research? Would you say oh, hemp yes, really started far. booming when weed started booming at the same time? Um, no. Uh, hemp is brand new. <coughs> hemp is... Nobody knows about hemp. No, no, that's what I'm saying. Like, because weed started booming first, oh, yes. then hemp started booming like it was just something else? Well, the... the or was CBD, there already hemp research or CBD no, research? No, the CBD aspect started coming out, and then... They started realizing that you get it from hemp seed, so hemp seed is um, most hemp seed is imported from overseas, and any kind of extractions that come from that can be <coughs> real crude and may not really contain much CBD, and that's the first uh, knowledge of uh, how these um, oils were being extracted from from hemp seed supposedly but what's hemp seed is that like an actual seed yeah it's just seeds it's like oh, a, you hemp, know like weed seed, seeds yeah. you know it's just basically okay. seeds that come from hemp hemp has a bunch of seeds a bunch when i went to the hemp expo they were they had guys and they were like actually i think trying to i think they were i don't know if they were just samples or what but they were like you know, promoting the sales of seeds, and they were talking about big numbers, like tens of thousands of seeds, and they just had, like, little containers with, like, tons of seeds. I think you could even, like, bought some from here and there or whatever from some of those people that had, I don't even know, but they were just, like, tons of of seeds. Not like marijuana, where six seeds of marijuana is, like, $60 or something like that. Or maybe... I can't remember three seeds or something. I don't know. I don't know how many, how much those are, but they're a lot more expensive for marijuana seeds versus hemp seeds. But yeah, you would get the CBD from uh, hemp seed, but no, that's not where you get the bulk of CBD. You get it <coughs> from the hemp plant, and they just started to uh, grow the hemp plant, and so. Um, they're they're learning it's a whole learning process so yeah i definitely wouldn't have known this because they didn't really know about this they're having issues with uh trying to get the higher content of cbds and all that kind of stuff but even the thc the the marijuana weeds themselves they're you know trying to figure out how to create climates that are the most um, optimizing for this plant to grow. So, yeah, there's a whole bunch of uh, of stuff coming along. But, yeah, with commercialization, oh, man, that's a big topic, too, you know, because it's like they're, you know, like I said, you have some companies that are all in-house, and they grow their own weed, they manufacture their own products, and so your you know your selection is is kind of based on what they what they got just on what they got it gets deep 
commercialization. Like, uh, yeah. So, but that's like with any product. This is just the newest product. It's just the newest product that we have. Yeah. And uh, and so yeah, things happen like, you know, s- some companies will <clears throat> well, they do a, a lot of these companies. Most companies they do stuff like it helps them, um, and from a business aspect, you know, like we need to grow the weed like this so it can grow faster or in more abundance of, you know, so it's different. Yeah, it's I guess different. we could go ahead and continue in that conversation, but then we'd probably be an hour and a half to two hour <laughs> podcast. So getting into all yeah. the differences of all the weed and whatnot. Yeah, but yeah, coming over here, yeah, there's a whole bunch of uh, a whole bunch of uh, knowledge and stuff to talk about and what this weed can do. But yes, you could very easily go to a dispensary. Pick up a hundred milligram candy bar, eat it, and, and then trip about, your own podcast. And within about an hour, <laughs> you'll be in the middle of your podcast and be like, "Holy shit, <laughs> it worked!" <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so that's legalization in Colorado. Alrighty, guys, till next time. See ya. All right, so. We're back. Part two. Part two. To our talk about uh, living in a state where marijuana legalization is, um, you know. I thought everyone was going to be smoking everywhere. Like the entire state was just covered in a, no. like a smog. No. It's just no. all weed. No, that's totally not the case. <laughs> There's not people smoking everywhere. Or anywhere. Almost, yeah. They, I see people here and there, but no. Most of them just keep it in their house. They, I guess, are doing the responsible thing. The natives really don't talk about it either. No, it's all kind of on the hush. <clears throat> because, you know, there is a, a big bad st- stigma that's still with it. But um, we were talking about the uh, legalization living in a state with legalization and also that you tried 100 milligrams of edibles. Yes, so this is the next day. <laughs> and we had to cut we had to cut cuz they first hit too hard podcast because they started kicking in. They kicked in too early. I was not expecting <laughs> them to kick in that fast nor was so I So we expecting. were talking about them taking up to 2 hours when you're taking about uh let's say anywhere from 10 20 if you're not that um, tolerant and then upwards to maybe 30 or 40 when you become a little more tolerant but if you take a hundred so you're what done are you saying? you're just done you just don't <laughs> what what did it what did it take maybe 30 it took about minutes. an hour and 30 minutes an hour and 30 minutes yeah, an hour and 30 minutes yeah because when you take that much you have a pre and a post high so the pre high is just like a normal Kind of deal, but then you get the post high. Oh, here they come. And I was uh, here where they comes were all at. three of them. <laughs> Great. We should really set up a camera so that way people can see this. Yeah. There's So we live with three dogs, and there's just no way that we're going to be able to be down here without them walking around. Yeah. Just Seeing so long the as they don't eat each other, then we'll be fine. <laughs> but yeah, uh, back to this. Uh, oh, yeah. So edible. my pre and post high. So the pre high is just kind of like the normal what I get from 60 milligrams mm-hmm. or less. And then uh, the post high is the, I can't do nothing right now. I can't do this. I'm so just you, too high you for wake this. Up, you wake up and you're still high. Yeah. So like uh, this morning I woke up and was just like, I can't do this conscious thing right now. Mm-hmm. I just can't. I'm going to go back to bed. Yeah. So what I, what I thought was 10 minutes was an hour. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, that could definitely... Uh, be uh, intensified by taking that much edible so that's what you wanted to find out and you did yeah it was not a productive day today <laughs> nothing yeah. nothing got done right yeah so um 
you know, other stuff though about uh, living here in legalization. I mean, there's other products we just kind of touch base on um, uh, the edibles, but you know, there's flour, um, and waxes, and there's plenty resins, of concentrates. And... Yes. Yeah. There's... The thing with me is just that I just don't like smoking. I just can't do right. it. I guess because the coughing thing, and when you eat something, it's just like normal. Took like you do it all the time, so like not everyone smokes. I don't smoke. Right. Right. So yeah, and that's the thing. I mean, there is a lot of uh, a lot of new stuff, and y'all were actually looking for cookies. Yeah, we were originally were looking, looking for, for cookies. cookies. Yeah, and that's another thing too is that um, you know you kind of gotta look around because not every shop is just gonna have all this stuff. So you really do, you know, to enjoy some of the stuff that you want to try, um, you know, you got to go kind of shop around and or pay a premium, you know, some of that yeah, stuff. Yeah, not every place is the price. same. Yeah. Like, uh, there's no consistency. Uh, for there's example. There's a few products. There's a few products that are, but you know, they're few. not, there's not, um, they're not across the board. But I mean, that's the thing, like I said, you know, you have a company that will just, grow their own and and it's all in in house they grow it extract it process it and they sell it yeah i mean it's pretty it's pretty interesting the only part i guess i don't like is the fact that again i see it as food so it's not like you can have the same thing everywhere right right. and yeah that is you know, just how it is. You kind of got to take it like that. And, yeah. you know, there's it's like certain, not mass produced. Right. There's certain shops that I'll go to if I'm looking for flour, you know, for the for the buds that, you know, they'll have uh, better buds or, you know, good pricing for better buds. And then there's other shops that have uh, concentrates that do, you know, a really good job with concentrates. And again, they're priced very well. That's always a you know a plus, especially yeah. when you're you know consuming like this. I mean it the it can get costly when you oh, do yeah. it on a regular basis. Yeah, like there's some gummies out there. They're like twenty six. Yeah, like yeah, thirty dollars. There's like thirty dollars. Yeah, for ten milligrams of uh, of uh, edibles and gummies. Yeah. Actually, the one to ones are more expensive. <clears throat> yeah, I think they for uh, people who don't know. It basically means a one to one is the uh, THC to CBD ratio. Meaning that they'll have 10 milligrams of CBD and 10 milligrams of THC. So what about what about those? Um, you've tried those uh, yeah. edibles, and what what do you think of um, of that hmm. uh, effect versus an edible that's just THC? How to describe a high? <clears throat> so you know how you get really tired like you get exhausted essentially right and you just cannot move anymore like your your goal is to get in bed like mm-hmm. that's that's all you're thinking about and uh, and then um basically it's that kind of feeling a feeling of exhaustedness um like you want to you want to go to bed however you don't necessarily need to go to bed. So it's like that feeling. Right. You just want to go and relax. Relax, just yeah. Kinda. Yeah. So you think that you were able to kind of, uh, it almost sounds like you're saying you were able to enjoy the high a little bit more. Like it wasn't so overpowering. It was able to, you were able to just kind of have a more relaxing or calming kind of feel. You think, is that what you're... Oh, yeah, definitely. It was more yeah. of a, I just need to just relax. Like, yeah. any kind of uh, yeah. strain on me, or any kind right. of physical activity is a strain. Stress relief or something. Yeah. Well, that, mm. and it, well, it makes me... That's well, interesting. yes and no, because the other thing, the other thing is that if I need to be productive, if I need to get something done, um, when I take the one-to-one, it's more like if whatever action it is, like let's say I'm washing dishes and mm-hmm. I'm have a, I've eaten a one to one gummy, the muscle or whatever mm-hmm. that I'm using to wash dishes, mm-hmm. uh, most of the time those be my triceps. No, mm-hmm. All right, send them in your arm. traps. So those are my so traps essentially. Your, it it starts feel? hurting like it's sore, like it doesn't want to mm-hmm. move, like it's weird. Hmm. So you probably feel more sensation or something. That's interesting. Well, they say that the CBD is to uh, supposedly uh, 
kind of uh, helps to um, counter the the psychoactiveness of THC, and um, and also you know in um, in conjunction you know with the THC, it's supposed to kind of enhance the entourage effect, what they call when you have uh, multiple cannabinoids uh, put together, you know, mm. and you start getting effects from um, different effects because they kind of start, you know, going off of each other and stuff like that, creating yeah. different effects. But again, everyone's different. So. Right, right. But, you know, the, again, like I said, this is your personal experience, and that's why I'm asking you because the claim is that CBD would counter the THC psychoactiveness. Mm, not if it has THC in it. But yeah, you're but saying that you you're you would be a little bit more. No, calm. I'd still be high. Yeah, you're yeah. high, but you know you don't think that it's like a more controllable high, like you're mm. more of a mellowness instead of like a full out like I'm high. No, like that is a you have no control. When it's you're like doing the one to one. Yeah, it's more you have like no your control. It's more like your body has control, mm. and so well, it's I like. Mean, that could, again, these are all just, you know, <coughs> uh, uh, I guess just uh, the effects of how your body reacts and learning what is going on and what is it doing. Is it calming? Is it relaxing? Is it relieving stress? Is it enhancing the effects instead of uh, countering the effects or um, you I don't know, know what's happening? You ever felt like it's a, like you don't have control over your body? Yes. Okay, so that's what the one to one does. Hmm. So if I do anything that my body's like, nah, this is not relaxing, hmm. whatever it is, it just starts hurting. That's well, not hurt being hurt, but like it's, it just it feels stiff. I think stiff. you have more sensitivity or something. Maybe. Hmm. That's interesting. Yeah. <clears throat> well, I don't know. I can't really speak too much on edibles because um it's hard for me to feel some of the effects especially if it's like under 30 or 40 milligrams yeah edibles are not for everyone for no. one two reasons one being they're they, they can be too strong and they are too strong um because when you digest them the thc transforms into something else through your liver and it's five times more potent supposedly mm -hmm. yes um However, the trade-off is when you have a tight tolerance, those gummies are really don't make much of a difference. Right, and that's what I'm saying. I can eat, you know, up to forty milligrams, fifty milligrams, and and I could be okay. I I know, you know, where um good, where I'm good with the uh, with doing that. But yeah, sometimes I do. I can do a hundred milligrams just to. You know, say, yeah, I'm going to do the 100 milligrams. <laughs> and, and 100 be milligram a, challenge. It would be a controllable high for me, you know. It wouldn't be something that I would feel uh, um, as, you know, groggy as, as you were. Um, but again, I mean, I've had experience in um, digesting, ingesting um, THC and uh, having it processed like that through your liver and it being more enhanced. I will say the first time I did do it, yes. <clears throat> that was um, something totally different. I hadn't uh, really ever experienced um, ingesting THC, and especially not in a in an oil form, a concentrated form. And so, yeah, that was... a. Uh, it was like a whole like like getting high all over again. It was a, it was a different experience. Um, I felt this um, sense of like I just had to go lay down. I just it was it was pretty overpowering, and I just had to kind of go lay down and close my eyes and and just let it kind of kind of roll. And I could just see uh, geometric shapes in my head just kind of coming in and out. What do they call that? What? When you're seeing like a... It's uh, a breakthrough. No, like it's almost like that kaleidoscope kind of deal or whatever. Like they say you could see stuff like that. I don't know what they... So, fractals. So what is it called? Fractal, fractals. 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 
fractals. Fractals. You yeah, went to the fourth kind of dimension. Like fractals, you know, but not really fractals. But yes, it was like geometric shapes and stuff like that. You so. went to the fourth dimension, man. Yeah, probably so. But yeah, it was. Um, it was. Um, Kind of breakthrough-ish, yeah. There were, you know, stuff that um, doesn't, didn't normally kind of pop up in my imagination like that. You know, those aren't images that um, I was accustomed to. This is like, whoa, what's going on? You know, like, wow. So, yeah. But since, like, again, like I said, I have gained a tolerance, and so... Yeah, yep, now I can we do just 40 need to do something just to, else. just to do 40. Well, now we need to inject weed into the bloodstream. Uh, no, I don't know about all that. Again, yeah. like I said, I mean, people say, well, I mean, it, why is uh, concentrate so expensive? You're getting so little. It's one little itty-bitty gram. It's just one little dab. And it's like, well, try your best to go ahead and go through it. <laughs> go through that dab, you know, a whole gram and see how far you get. Because you're not going to get very far. Because they're pretty potent. There's a lot of potency in the concentrates. Mm. Yeah. So. Yeah, I mean... Again, I... Well, because I went ahead and did a dab. So the... The potency of a dab for me is about... Two to three gummies. Mm. And even at that, the dab only lasted like an hour long Well, they're, high, they're totally hour long different high. too, you know. They're, and that's another thing is... Um, with uh, legalization, I mean, you're able to grow up in a whole different scene of what this is. This is actually legal. You're taking part in something that's legal. I have actually, um, you know, taken part in the illegal aspect of this and have, um, you know, uh, have had a customs to a different kind of um, experience from marijuana. Um, from smoking marijuana, you know, being able to smoke marijuana, you know, what they would call bulk Mexican weed or whatever, you know. Damn. So, coming from Texas, that's that's what it, you know, you would get most marijuana was coming from Mexico. But contrary to what everybody says about how horrible it was, it wasn't horrible. I mean, I'm, I've seen stuff up here that is pretty bad pretty bad stuff i mean they grow outdoors and it's pretty tough to grow outdoors here and so yeah they're not coming up with uh very so good crops. legal regulated weed sucks more uh, not necessarily than that it sucks it's just that you know they say that they're doing everything to um, regulations where they're not polluting and they're not doing this and doing that you know and us and that's that's a uh, that that is certain. They they are doing that. They are taking more precautions. But yeah, the sometimes the the product, um, the end result isn't uh, that um, that much more uh, greater than than what was already out there. That they're referring to as you know some of the worser stuff. You know they always so, refer to the Mexican. Where's uh, the bulk weed is almost like trash weed for those who are looking to move from a state where it's not legal to smoke weed moving to a state that does have it legal where would be the dankest of dank well where an, a non-legal state yeah if you're moving from a non-legal state to a legal state oh you oh where's the best marijuana growing yeah. legally right now yeah in my opinion i mean you gotta say california california i mean california by far has a lot of the genetics you know from the underground these guys have been doing stuff for a long <clears throat> long time so they uh they have a lot of experience they have a lot of uh breeding um uh, going on even though they don't again they didn't know about a lot of this stuff they kind of did but it wasn't so uh, uh, vast in information like it is now <clears throat> none of this stuff was really documented nothing was really tried uh, tried to like you know put you know they're putting millions of dollars you know they're talking about 20,000 square foot growing facilities that are being built 
and followed up one year later with another 20,000 square foot facility right next to it with any kind of improvements that they could have uh, um, foreseen to make this new grove that much more better. So they're putting in tons of money. None of that stuff was really going on in the underground, but they were doing a really good job of creating good product. <clears throat> I mean, you know, when you're, even when you're on the street and you're looking for, for some, uh, for some marijuana, you're looking for something good. You don't want something bad. You know, who wants to go buy something bad, right? So, you know, these guys worked on what's good, what's good to me, what do I like, and they just started doing their thing, and, you know, they did a really good job of creating a lot of good strains. And, you know, it's been said that California is, um, uh, essentially their, their marijuana has reached like overseas and stuff so damn yeah. oh yeah yeah that's what we should be that's known how for good it is instead of selling weapons selling weed. right selling marijuana selling weed to other countries well i mean you know california is in that regard they are um a major hub for um genetics hmm. yeah but um i mean i, I don't even know I, I couldn't say for sure i i guess uh, you know, what's the greatest thing about legalization here in Colorado? I mean, there is a lot of variety. They do have, um, a lot of concentrates. And again, I mean, concentrates don't have to be super duper top notch. Um, uh, cause they have all kinds of stuff that's coming out. You know, it's not even just wax and shatter. They have all kinds of, uh, concoctions you could say yeah I mean, they have. Uh, there's also this thing at the dispensary we went to last night they're not selling it no more but it's called a transdermal pin mm -hmm. oh yeah and those are like um those are topicals and all that those aren't yeah. even you know necessary yeah so they're lotions and other stuff so it may not necessarily be something you have to orally intake it could be something that you can just go ahead and put on your skin yourself. yeah yeah. <clears throat> yeah they were claiming that you could um uh put yourself a little dosage over there i think it's maybe like two milligrams per dose or something like that yeah. and um it, the, it would you know start um relieving some pain in maybe a joint or something that's going on in your body but, uh, yeah, they basically, they do sell them. It's just that they are out, you know, some of that stuff just kind no, of... No, they were saying they weren't selling oh, them anymore. Oh, they're not going to sell them at all no, anymore. No. Yeah, yeah, I mean, well, really don't know how it's regulated. Yeah, well, I guess, again, I mean, if the product wasn't doing too well, I mean, two milligrams of... Uh, that's a whole another little tangent there about, you know... What's topicals. the right amount of milligrams well i mean yeah that's a big talk they're all trying to figure out you know dosaging and trying to Say have a thousand the, the milligrams a um, thousand should be the standard uh well a thousand <laughs> and every thousand milligrams is basically like one gram and it's it's hard that's the deal is because 10 milligrams in an edible mm -hmm. is different than 10 milligrams in a concentrate you know, and for instance, in a concentrate, I could probably, you know, in one setting, I'm um, doing upwards to, I mean, actually, not one setting, let's go ahead and say like, you know, in, a, in an afternoon where I just go ahead and start dabbing and have a couple sessions, you know, I could very easily go through a half a gram, which would be like 500 milligrams. So that's that's pretty high. So you what you're know. saying is we got to make it ten thousand then. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, contrary to you know forty milligrams of an edible, you know that that right there could could hold me down for a while. But if I'm just messing around with the dabs, then yeah, it's like you said, the dabs are different, and you kind of go into uh you know feeling the effects and they start to kind of wear off and if you can kind of uh come back to it and do come it again back to it you know and you, you can should. tolerate it then you just go ahead and can't kind of keep going at it you know sometimes when i just want to go at it yep i can get upwards to about a half a gram in an afternoon so 
Dang. But you also have to keep in, in mind that you're not the average person. Right, and that's what I'm saying. But even at that, um, the the uh, ratio of an edible, you know, saying like, oh, well, I'll stay at about 50 milligrams and that'll be, you know, pretty good. That's That's what, a tenth? That's a tenth. So it's hard to say, you know, how many milligrams do you need? And that's what they're trying to figure out is how many milligrams, um, if you were to take it like this, how many milligrams would you need? Um, another product that has um, kind of uh, got some attention is the inhaler. Uh, did you ever try the inhaler? I tried it. I didn't really care for it. What didn't did, really... did it fit? Did it have any kind of effect? Not minimal. Minimal? Minimal. Effects. So that one was apparently... A thousand milligrams, and each um, spray that you would spray was um, uh, ten milligrams. There was a hundred sprays, and it would be um, ten milligrams a piece. Yeah, and uh, I just like to eat, so I just do edibles. Yeah, well, uh, and the other crazy thing is that I thought there was going to be a lot of places that had infused foods and stuff like that. Mm, Nothing. It's because of um, FDA regulations or something like that. It's kind of, uh, it's all just a bunch of uh, legal jargon that has to be sorted. Well, Um, even when we went to Denver, there wasn't really no one kind of promoting anything no, no. In terms they're, they're basically like private chefs you gotta run them for the day who knows somebody who would go ahead and have some experience cooking with cannabis yeah they make it seem like these uh people exist everywhere and that they're well that's television man yeah that's but television. you know it it'd be great if they were well, I mean... Because, again, like, I could go eat something that I would enjoy eating and then still get the same effect. Yeah. So, yeah. I don't see why they yeah, don't make it legal. Be great, but they just got to sort through all the legalities. Mm. Yeah. So, yeah, living in a legal state is... It's not what you expect. Ups, but, yeah, it doesn't, you know, it doesn't have all these perks, you know. And, if again, if you want to enjoy them, you know, you're definitely going to pay a premium, you know. Um, being on the sh- on the black market, you know, sometimes you just kind of had connections, and based on your connections, you were able to um, get know, better stuff, get some get some really good stuff. But uh, yeah, in the in the commercial game, they're not. Everyone uh, pays retail price. <laughs> everybody's paying retail. There's no and, guarantee you'll get and, the dankest uh, of the dank. And there's limitations, so you don't get really any, you know. They give you some price breaks, but they, you know, there's a limit, so they can only give you a price break up to that limit, and uh, so yeah, that's uh, that's what it is dealing with uh, living in a legalized state. It's crazy, but what do you expect? I don't know. I was expecting everyone to be smoking weed from. Like just seeing a mom with a stroller, well, she's smoking because, a weed and uh, she passed it to the baby. Well, <laughs> the baby smoking gives no, it back. That's just that's just crazy. But um, I think um, you know where <clears throat> where we used to live in Central Texas, uh, which would be essentially Austin, Texas. You know that's a way more progressive city, and so many people have made claims about how um, you know. Marijuana is essentially uh, decriminalized. They're not going to really punish you for smoking. So. Oh yeah, it's what you call reggae fest down there. Yeah, you know. So in case you so, are not from Austin, Texas, and don't know about reggae fest, it's basically one day. So that's actually where you experience the first time. Yes, you got that's high, the first right? time. Right. Yeah. So, yeah, you know, again, you know, they have a whole fest, and and it. Once you step inside the gates, I mean, that's that's like a feeling of legalization. Like you, yes. you get like this idea, like this is so. This is what legalization is like, yeah. <laughs> because you're sitting in the gates and you're looking around, and there's security. No, and that stuff. is not what legalization is like, because uh, people don't do that here. And that's what I'm telling you. Maybe you have uh, you know an expectation, like you know, you go in 
And you're like, wow, every because when you go into the reggae fest and um and and you experience this, you you see a a, a vast crowd of um different people and everybody is just kind of cool and relaxed laying down on doing the grass, their own thing listen to the whalers some little smoke circles listening to some reggae music like you said the whalers that we yeah. i think i've seen them two times two times at the reggae fest yeah, yeah. and um no problems there's actually kids mm-hmm. there's kids they're not getting uh, high though no kids are getting high but the kids are um, welcome. You can bring your kids, and there's no, um, you know, stairs, odd stairs, or nothing like. What are your kids doing here? I mean, it's a very peaceful, very, I mean, yeah, like the like kids have a bunch of glow loving. sticks and stuff like that. Yeah, they're it's like evening in, time, right? It's peace, love, and joy. Like everybody's enjoying themselves in the in the moment and the scenery. I mean, Austin downtown, you got the whole uh sky uh scape there of uh buildings and everything that you're right there in auditorium shore so you're looking up and it's just your backdrop you know yeah. so i mean it's just an amazing uh feeling that you get and you think is this what legalization is like yeah <laughs> and you come out here and it's like um it's not that free and open yeah you know no it's not like that not at all there's no rainbows nowhere <laughs> <laughs> it's not smoke everywhere. No, no. And people no. definitely do not get along over here. <laughs> it's really bad. Well, this is that's that's just kind of speaking more so in the state, maybe. Yeah, and maybe that's just everyone that's not from the South. Because if you're from the South, a lot of times you're real friendly to an extent. Mm. Over Southern here, hospitality, like, I Southern guess hospitality, I guess is what they call it. Mm. Yeah, but up here, nah. Yeah, people are nah. a little more forward, a little more direct. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I've heard uh, a lot of uh, older gentlemen that curse. You know, yeah. and that's that's different because I usually don't curse in front of uh, older, uh, older, know, older men. Yeah, I don't. I try not to to curse, and uh, yeah, hearing that it's a little different because you don't normally hear older people cursing back home. Mm, you typically hear older people be racist but that's okay back home yeah (laughs) and you're like ah just be quiet you old bag like i mean whatever yeah what are you gonna do run me over in your wheelchair come on so yeah i mean that's uh kind of um (laughs) you know uh, touches a lot of uh a lot of different little tidbits about legalization and there's so much more that we could kind of get into but yeah hey maybe if you have something suggest it and we'll talk about it all right that's it goodbye